Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and when I was little, the best part of going back to school was school supplies. I just loved the new paper, the new books, and binders, and the new markers and crayons. So let's make a quilt that gives us the same feeling as a new box of crayons. The pattern is a free downloadable pattern from Riley Blake Designs. And the fabric that's needed for this quilt is a background fabric of two and three quarters, which is that lovely black, and ten colorful fat quarters. And the fat quarters come in a really great Crayola box. And there are ten fat quarters rolled inside the box. This reminds me of that big box of crayons that you used to be able to get with the sharpener on the bottom. And this fabric is available in quilt shops, online, and it's also available in a kit format. And it comes with the pattern, the fabric, two spools of thread, and enough fabric for the background. The hardest part of this project is going to be opening this box and using the fabric because it just looks so nice. The pattern gives a layout on how the fat quarters need to be cut. And it's really important that we follow the layout. And that way we'll have enough material to make the entire quilt. All of the fat quarters are going to be cut the same way. There are a couple of templates that we're going to need to trace onto those fat quarters. Take the three shapes and trace them onto some form of a template plastic. We're going to need the top piece and this little curvy piece. The other piece is going to be cut out of the black. When you print out the pattern, be sure to print it at 100% and you can even check this little measurement. It's a one inch square, so as long as we keep that one inch, we know these are going to be correct. It will be very helpful if you take your cutting directions and draw them on the fabric first versus cutting them first. Because we're going to cut a few at a time, it's going to save a little bit of time, but it's also going to assure accuracy. The first piece is 11 inches by 16 inches. We have a 2 inch strip and it's going to go to 16 inches. A 1 and a half inch strip, it is also at 16 inches. And then at the top, we need to draw these little template pieces. We will need 4 of these shapes and 8 of these little collars. So before I trace all of these shapes, I'm going to fuse the fabric onto a fusible web. So I'll draw those out later. From here, I'm going to be able to cut all of these pieces out. I want to try to maintain as much space as I can for these little curved pieces. Once these main shapes are cut out, I'm going to be able to work on this little collar. I'm going to cut them out after I fuse them onto a fusible web. I will be able to get four along the top and four within this little area here. Heat and Bond is an example of a fusible web. It looks like a piece of paper and on one side it is the paper. On the other side it's like glue. You can feel it because it's a little rough. You need to iron the fabric onto this glue side. And be sure to put something over top so you don't get any glue on your iron. Then you're going to iron this down and then let it cool. From there we're going to be able to take this shape and trace it out. I like to trace it from the back and I can see through this paper so it'll be easy for me to see where these are going to go. When I get them all drawn and cut out, I'm going to have this little shape. So you still have the paper on one side, the good side of the fabric, the glue is underneath. And when you peel that paper off, the glue has been transferred onto that applique. Once the fat quarters are cut out, we're going to be able to cut out the black. You will need 20 strips of fabric, two and a half inches by 16 and a half inches. And those pieces are going to go on each side of this big piece. And they're going to match up to that 16 inch mark. The two and a half inch piece is going to be sewn along the bottom, and that one and a half inch is going to go along the top. This is going to make four crayons. So we can go to the machine and sew all of these layers together. The second part of that template is going to match up towards those crayons. So you'll have one and then one reversed. We're going to start off with four inch strips. Trace this shape on. Make sure you trim off that seam allowance. The second shape is just going to fit right beside it. 
be able to continue marking that until the whole strip has been filled up with these little shapes. And then from there, we can take that ruler and cut them out. You need a total of 80, 40 on one side and 40 on the other side. And by having fabric that is reversible, they will look the same. These little pieces are going to get stitched on top of the top of the crayons. So one side on first. To match up those seams, you'll need a little quarter inch hanging out on the one side and a quarter inch hanging out on the other. So as you're stitching, you're going to be able to stitch right between this V and stitch coming off of that V. So we have that little quarter inch at the top and that little quarter inch on the bottom. When this is pressed, it'll keep the bottom edge straight. Then you'll have a little dog ear hanging up at the top. You're going to be able to put the next side on. Same as this end, you're going to need the dog ears on one side. When it's pressed open, we now have the top of the crayon done. This is going to be cut to make four crayons. Once the crayons have been cut apart, we're going to be able to put these little bands on. I have a fusible web, so I'm going to be able to remove that paper and fuse them onto the top and onto the bottom. Once this is fused down, I'm going to do a little row of stitching just to hold that on. The crayon tops go on this smaller piece, that one and a half inch that you cut. You can already see how much they really do look like crayons. So I'm going to finish off all of my crayons. The crayons are going to be stitched together to make three rows. And there's 13 per row, which means we're going to have one left over. The crayons are pointing up and pointing down. And by doing that, the seams are going to nestle together. The primary colors and that black really pop. The next we'll be sewing these three rows together and we have a three and a half inch band that's going to go in between them. With those three rows put together, we're ready to add the borders on. And the first border goes all the way around the outside. It is a two and a half inch strip. The next border has this little pieced border that has all the leftover fabrics, plus the background fabric to make the next border. Then the last one, you have a third border. I'm going to change the borders. I'm going to do a large five inch border. I'm adding those two long sides on first. I will measure the quilt body and that is what my two five inch borders are going to be. And to figure out the bottom and the top, I will measure from the outside edge to the outside edge. That's going to give me the measurement for the top and the bottom. When you download this pattern, you're going to have all of the directions for this border but I'm changing it up. Instead of having those strips go around the quilt, I'm going to have them go into the corner. The little colored strips were cut at one inch and the black was a one and a half inch strip. And I've sewn them together. So I have a nice big block. I'm going to take that block and I'm gonna sew it on the corner and trim this off. So I need to cut off an angle. In order to take this corner off so that the strip can fit on, I need to find a 45 degree angle. So I've taken a mark a quarter inch from that corner and using that 45 degree mark on the ruler, the 45 degree is up at the top, that quarter inch mark is here, now I can draw that line. From here you can either cut this off or sew the piece on first. I like to sew it on first just to make sure that it's going to work out fine. We need to make sure that our strip set is going to be big enough to fill in that whole corner. From there, we can use the line that we drew along the edge of the fabric. Now I can stitch following a quarter inch. I find it's easier to do it this way because then I don't have to worry about that very stretchy 45 degree angle. Pin it and stitch that quarter inch. When it's stitched on, I'm going to be able to just fold that back. If I turn the quilt over, I see the original corner now I know that I've had enough fabric to cover that full corner. Now I can trim off this extra piece. Once that's been trimmed off and pressed, I can square that corner up. It won't matter the size of the square. I want to match up the two edges. Now I can trim off this extra. It now gives me a really fun different corner. Before I go too far, I want to do a little row of stitching right along this corner. 
and keep it within that quarter inch. It's going to help all of this corner stay put and not stretch out of shape. I'm going to repeat this to the opposite corner on the bottom. And we're done. Now I was not able to duplicate that unique smell of a brand new box of Crayola crayons, but it definitely gives you the feeling of a brand new box of crayons. And my favorite color when I open up a new box is always turquoise. What is your favorite color? Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and come on back. Let's see what we're coloring next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.